Hello students. In this video, we're going to um, strategize uh, techniques for solving um, you know, some basic first order differential equations. Now, the assumption here is that you already know separation of variables and you already know the integrating factor method for a first order linear equation. Um, if you don't know those techniques already, then um, please uh, consult um, some other videos. I have um, a few that you can uh, take a look at on my channel. Um, but uh, please make sure that you are solid on these, on these techniques first, these two, separation of variables and integrating factor method for first order linear equations. All right, so that's the assumption. Okay, so I'm going to give you actually five examples. I have three um, here at first to take a look at, but uh, we will actually end up doing five. So the first three, you actually can use either method, separation of variables or integrating factor method. Um, both will work. Um, I will show you a couple other examples where you have to make a choice, uh, one or the other. Now, this uh, first example here, you have, um, uh, you know, the the equation the dy dt equals 3y and you might think well that's you know you might only see that as a separation of variables um, but that is not the only case you could subtract that 3y from both sides and um, get the dy dt minus 3y here uh, is equal to zero and now this is set up for an integrating factor method sure you have zero on the right hand side that's fine but um, you have a coefficient of a linear y variable here. So remember, this is a linear equation, so certainly um, first order linear equation, so certainly the integrating factor method for first order linear ODEs is going to be effective. Okay, well you know how to solve, um, let's look at the left column here, you know how to solve this using separation of variables, right? You get the, you split the differential, um, you integrate both sides, you get the natural log, you exponentiate both sides, you um, re-initialize uh, the um, arbitrary constant here and you get y equals c e to the 3t. At some point you'll just look at this equation and you'll say oh yeah the derivative equals the function equals its derivative maybe there's a constant here it's obviously has, it has to be c e to the 3t. You'll get that good but maybe initially you have to go through the process of solving it. That separation of variables in the left hand column. On the right hand column I already talked about the setup. Um, so you push the th uh, 3y over to the other side, you get a minus 3y, so you have dy dt minus 3y. And so now you're going to, um, your integrating factor is gonna be e to the minus 3t, so you multiply every term by the e to the minus 3t. You collapse the left-hand side. Now you have a derivative is equal to zero. The derivative of some function is equal to zero. Um, when a derivative is equal to zero, that occurs when whatever you're differentiating is equal to a constant. And then you hit you either divide by e to the three uh, by this e to the minus three t, and then because you have a negative exponent when you bring it up, you get the positive exponent, or you just multiply both sides by e to the three t. Then you get e to the zero on the left hand side, which is one, and you're left with the solution. Okay. Um, in the next in the subsequent uh, examples, I'll go a little bit faster in the techniques. Okay, this next example, yes, you could even solve this one by separation of variables. That might come as a surprise. You might have thought initially um, you could push the 3y over and get dy dt minus 3y is equal to 2, and then you would do the integrating factor method and collapse the derivative, integrate both sides, um, the integral of the derivative gives you the integrand, um, you integrate this term, this exponential here, you add your arbitrary constants, collect them together, and then you multiply everything through by e to the 3t. Notice you get the same solution you did in the homogeneous case, the, the case with the zero on the right-hand side, but you get this minus two-thirds here. All right? What might come as a surprise um, to you is uh, you could still solve this by separation of variables. Um, you could think of this 3y plus 2 as being multiplied by 1. There's, right? there's, a, there's a multiply by 1 here. And then when you split the differentials, you're going to get a dt on the right-hand side. And you're going to get um, the dy over 3y plus 2. Now, the, what might make this seem more difficult is you have to do this integration here. And this is a, going to be a u substitution. And of course, you're going to get a natural log 
because um, you let u equal 3y plus 2, and then you get a factor of 1 third out of there, so you're going to get du over u, and when you integrate that, you're going to get a natural log of u. You put the 3y plus 2 back in, and now you're off to the races. You exponentiate both sides, which is common in the separation of variables technique. You get to 3y plus 2, then you push the 2 over to the other side, you get a minus 2, then you divide everything by 3. The c divided by 3 is still going to be an arbitrary constant, so I just left that as an arbitrary constant, and you get the same solution, sure enough. Um, just commutative property, I just reversed the orders here. The next case, um, if you notice um, in the first two cases, y, the dependent variable, appears linearly. That's a linear equation. The derivative of the dependent variable appears linearly. Here, I stuck the independent variable in instead of the dependent variable. So there's a t there. So that means you're just going to integrate. So um, that's right. You want to get at the um, at the, the dependent variable, which is the, the function that's dependent upon t. So you just integrate both sides. Now, you could look at this as separation of variables, right? You, you have an, a 1 here. You divide by 1. You integrate the dy. You get the y. You integrate 3t plus 2 dt, and there you go. That's, that's separation of variables, it looks like. This is also, and you can also think of it as an integrating factor method, except the coefficient of the linear y term is 0. And so your integrating factor is a 1. Now, those thinking of it in terms of separation of variables or integrating factor method might seem silly um, and inefficient, uh, and, and maybe that would be. Um, the simplest thing to do here in the most efficient way is just to think of just integrating the right-hand side if you have dy dt equals a function of just the independent variable. Now, let's look at two more cases where you have to make a choice. Here, um, you have uh, dy dt equals um, 3y, and I notice the derivative of y and y both appear linearly, so this is certainly um, a candidate for the integrating factor method. This is not a candidate for separation of variables because the function of y and the function of t are being added together, added or subtracted. Um, so you can't, you can't use the um, separation of variables in this case. Now you might say, well, what about this case? Yeah, there, the independent variable t does not appear in this 3y plus 2 case. Um, you can think of that as um, um, this whole thing being multiplied by 1. Here, just the 2 is being multiplied by t. Certainly, if I would have had parentheses around the 3y plus 2 and, and that would have been multiplied by t, then this would be a candidate for separation of variables. But that is not the case. So um, we're going to solve this by subtracting 3y from both sides, multiplying by the same integrating factor we've been using in the previous uh, two problems here, these first two problems. And, um, and then you collapse the derivative, you integrate. Here you're going to need um, integration by parts. So you're going to get this factor of minus 2 ninths here. You're going to get minus 2 thirds here, just like you did in the previous one, except now you're going to have a factor of t there. And then you multiply everything through by e to the 3t. So um, again, this is an integration by parts technique. I'm not going to go through integration by parts. Um, I'm assuming if you're taking differential equations, you know your techniques of integration. Um, if you don't, by all means, please um, consult some other videos or uh, calculus text. Um, but I just want to show you what this solution would look like. And here, you really don't have a choice. You're going to have to use the integrating factor method. And then what about separation of variables? Okay. Oh, wait, before I get there, um, let me just um, recap what I said before. And that is, um, could you, you know, you might think, well, couldn't I have just divided through by 3y here and, you know, gotten dy over 3y and then had the 2t here? Um, you just committed a mathematical crime if you do that. Uh, this is a, you know, this implies multiplication. This would be 3y times 2t. Um, now, that doesn't mean that you, if you did have that case, you certainly could do that by um, integrating factor method. But that is not what we have. We have an addition between these two. So you would have to subtract the 3y as you did in this case or in the first case, and in fact in this case. So please don't do that. Um, that is not a legal um, algebraic move. All right, now what happens if you have something like um, this equation here? Well, this can't be a candidate for the integrating factor method uh, for first order linear equation because this is a nonlinear equation. You have a y squared here. That's not linear. So 
your um, only choice between these two methods for solving this problem is to um, add the three y squared t to both sides and then divide by the y squared, leave the three t on this side, then you integrate and you do a little bit of algebra and you get this solution. Okay. Um, I know I went through the techniques very quickly here, but that's not the full point of this lesson. The, the main thrust of this lesson is the strategies you have to employ and when to recognize, when to use um, separation of variables and when to use the integrating factor method for first order linear equations. In some cases you get lucky and you can just do either. In some cases you cannot do either. And um, you're going to have to put in the practice to get yourself to the point where you can judge um, when uh, the case is. But I hopefully you've gathered some tips from this video. Uh, remember, um, if you have a linear, if y appears linearly, dy dt, it's not um, the exponent's 1 and it's not inside of another function. The y appears linearly, it's exponent's 1 and it doesn't appear inside of another function then certainly this might be an, a candidate for the integrating factor method. If the y appears nonlinearly, then this is most likely going to be a, K for, um, um, a candidate for separation of variables. All right, well, I hope you find this helpful. Good luck.